Oh, hi there. I'm I nearly said Lady Lie there. I'm Black Bright, and um, I tend to try to clarify things that sound a bit complex. And if you have any concerns or you're worried about something, you can always run it by me. I'm not a legal advisor. I'm not an immigration lawyer, so I can only um, give you a rough idea um, what you know how to answer you anyway I can give you a rough idea put it that way and it might help you and you can either determine whether or not to take it to a lawyer for more in-depth or you can just rest it on my laws or what I've got to say anyway the reason why I decided to do a video today is largely because I um, I came across it's old it's about nine months old but it's to do with a deportation order that resulted in thousands of um, deportations being cancelled and sometimes I say to people you know oh you don't have a chance and you know if you've done something wrong I mean if you if you if you've committed a crime that's totally different but provided you're just an overstayer uh, there could be um, a silver lining if the government make a mistake as in this case now this is the case of Pereira versus Sessions and like I said it's nine months ago it happened but what happened was since 1997 they've been giving out these notice to appears now notice to appears are the equivalent of um, summons in the UK so I'm talking about America now and what they've been doing is from 1997 till 2018, they've been giving out these summons, well, notice to appears, to people who were eligible for deportation. And on it, it didn't it didn't state the day or the time or the venue of where they should appear. It just said to be stated or to be to be confirmed or something. Anyway, what happened was in the case of Pereira, who's a Brazilian. He was sent this notice to appear. It didn't have no date, no time, no venue. And that was in 2006. Now in 2007, the immigration people, they sent him um, a date and a time and a venue. But he had moved from that address, so he didn't receive it. Anyway, in 2013, he gets stopped for a minor traffic violation. And because he didn't appear when... Um, they'd sent him the notice to appear before because he didn't receive it. They ordered his deportation in absentia, which means he wasn't there. So he gets stopped in 2013 for a minor traffic violation. He doesn't know there's a deportation out on him. So he's going around his merry business and he gets stopped and they take him down to be deported. Well, they take him to detention centre. He gets hold of his lawyer. His lawyers say, look, he didn't know about the notice to appear. He didn't receive it. And they said, well, um, they tried to appeal it. But apparently, because the original notice to appear did not have a date, a time and a venue, it rendered it null and void and the judge couldn't rule on a deportation. What's supposed to happen when you get that notice to appear? It puts a stop on your continuous residence from that moment. Because that stop, because that time stop wasn't um, valid because it didn't have a date and a time, that means Pereira didn't have that. And he actually, until 2013, still had that accrued continuous, continuous residence. Because, and by that time, he had accrued 10 years. So anyway, he had a good lawyer. The lawyer um, went to Supreme Court, it was thrown out. But in the end, the Supreme Court, eight judges um, out of nine ruled that because it didn't have um, it didn't have the date, the time or the venue, the judge couldn't rule and it was invalid. So apparently since 1997, they have been sending out all these notice to appear and none of them have that information on them not one and now it's become a big deal because all of those people who got a notice to appear and it what did wasn't completed are eligible to have their deportation cancelled or if they're in the country 
they, you know, if they're out of the country, they're eligible to return. Can you imagine how many thousands that is? Anyway, the lawyers are having a field day. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because sometimes there's a mistake that the government make, not very often, but sometimes, and that is what lawyers depend on. They depend on these little loopholes that, that the government make that can put you in the right and they can hang on to. So then because of that, because he... Um, because they hadn't put that date and the time and the venue, the fact that he had overstayed and the fact that he had a traffic violation had no consequence. So you've got lawyers out there saying, you know, free consultation. If you think you fall into the Pereira and Sessions category, give us a call. We give you a consultation. and Because they know they're going to make mega bucks. So I was just saying, I, I brought this up because sometimes, you know, you're sent a document. Like you might be sent a summons in the UK and you might just see your name on it and you don't look at all the details and there might be something that's wrong. So you have to make sure, number one, the name is right. If you've got any aliases, that they're correct. You have to make sure that your date of birth is correct, that the address is correct. And also what they're alleging you have done, the crime that you've committed, they're alleging you have committed why they're asking you to appear. That has to be correct too. Because if it's not, you can take that to a lawyer and get, get it appealed or get the deportation stayed. Apparently, all of those um, notices to appear, they can't even rectify them. They're saying they want to go back and put it in pen. And apparently they're not allowed to do that. But you know what that made me feel? It made me feel like karma. Because you know with the, in the in deaf people who are applying for indefinite leave to remain and all those applications and they're not giving them a squeeze, they're not giving them a bly, they're just saying, no, if you make a mistake, that's it, you're out. It's the same principle. Now the shoe is on the other foot. Now they know what it feels like. So when you get documentation, just don't take it as a fact. Just double check it. Make sure it's correct, because if it's not correct or if there is a mistake, that could be your loophole. That's all I've got to say for now. I've got to do my show. Um, I'm not quite sure if anybody of you, any of you are interested in reggae music. Um, I play on www.loversrockradio.com. It's a lovers radio shop, but I don't play lovers. And yeah, and that's all for now. Seven till nine every Friday. Bye bye.